Good afternoon. Welcome to Learn at Home with VIA. My name is Jennifer McKee. I'm a learning support teacher in the Jersey Shore Area School District. Our agenda for today is to think about our essential question. We're going to listen to the story, One Plastic Bag. We're going to discuss problems and solutions about our story, One Plastic Bag. We're going to learn how to make plarn, which is plastic yarn. We're also going to look at how to cut our bag to make the plarn. And then we're going to think about what we could make with our own plarn. Our essential question. What can you do with one plastic bag? I know one thing I like to do with my plastic bags once I get them is reuse them and turn them into trash can liners for my little trash cans. What else could you do with one plastic bag? While you think about it, now is a good time to get a clean plastic bag and a pair of scissors if you have them. We will use these after the story in our discussion. Right now we're going to listen to the story, One Plastic Bag. You're going to hear some music in the background that gets a little bit louder as we turn the pages. One Plastic Bag, Isoto Cisse and the Recycling Women of the Gambia. One Plastic Bag. Isoto Cisse and the Recycling Women of the Gambia, written by Miranda Paul, illustrations by Elizabeth Zuna. Jao Gambia. Isoto walks with her chin frozen. Fat raindrops pelt her bare arms. Her face hides in the shadow of a palm leaf basket and her neck stings with every step. Warm scents of burning wood and bubbling peanut stew drift past. Her village is close now. She lifts her nose to catch the smell. The basket tips. One fruit tumbles, then two, then 10. The basket breaks. Isotu kicks the dirt. Something silky dances past her eyes, softening her anger. It moves like a flag flapping in the wind and settles under a tamarind tree. Isotu slides the strange fabric through her fingers and discovers it can carry things inside. She gathers her fruits in the bag. The basket is useless now. She drops it knowing it will crumble and mix back in with the dirt. Four goats greet Isatu as Grandmother Wombe emerges from her kitchen hut. Hurry in before the rain soaks your beautiful mjuba. Isatu scurries in and Grandmother serves spicy rice and fish. Rain drums on the creaking aluminum roof. I broke your basket, Isatu confesses, but I found this. Plastic, Grandmother frowns. There's more in the city. Day after day, Isatu watches neighbors tote their things in bright blue or black plastic bags. Children slurp water and wanjo from tiny holes poked in clear bags. Market trays filled with minties wrapped in rainbows of plastic. The colors are beautiful, she thinks. She swings her bag high. The handle breaks. One paper escapes, then two, then 10. Isotu shakes sand off her papers. Another plastic bag floats by and she tucks her things inside. The torn bag is useless now. She drops it to the dirt, as everyone does. There's nowhere else to put it. Day after day, the bag she dropped is still there. One plastic bag becomes two, then 10, then 100. 
Plastic isn't beautiful anymore, she thinks. Her feet step down a cleaner path and the thought floats away. Years pass and Isatou grows into a woman. She barely notices the ugliness growing around her until the ugliness finds its way to her. Isatou hears a goat crying and hurries toward grandmother's house. Why is it tied up? Where are the other goats? Inside, the butcher is speaking in a low voice. Many goats have been eating these, he says. The bags twist around their insides and the animals cannot survive. Now three of your goats and so many other goats in the village have died. Grandmother Wambe's powerful shoulders sag. I said you must be strong and do something. But what? Isatou's feet lead her to the old, ugly road. A pile of garbage stands as wide as grandmother's cooking hut. Mosquitoes swarm near dirty pools of water alongside the pile. Smoke from burning plastic stings her nose. Her feet back away. Goats scamper past. They forage through the trash for food. Her feet stop. She knows too much to ignore it now. Holding her breath, she plucks one plastic bag from the pile, then two, then 10, then a hundred. What can we do? Isatou asks her friends. Let's wash them, says Fatim, pulling out Uma soap. Maram grabs a bucket and Incha fetches water from the well. Peggy finds clothespins, and they clip the wash bags on the line. As the bags dry, Isatou watches her sister crochet. Can you teach me? Wah, yes. Her sister shows Isatou the stitches, then hands her a metal tool. Isatou's fingers busy themselves. In, out, around. Jerry Jeff, thank you. Isatou finds a broomstick and carves her own tool from its wood. What's that for? Fatin asks. Isatou pauses. She and Peggy have an idea, but will their friends think it's crazy? Will the idea even work? Nervously, she explains the plan. One friend agrees to help, then two, then five. The women cut bags into strips and roll them into spools of plastic thread. Before long, they teach themselves how to crochet with this thread. Nagaligi B, asks grandmother, how is the work? Nadanka, Nadanka, answers Isatu. Slow. Some people in the village laugh at us. Others call us dirty. But I believe what we are doing is good. The women crochet by candlelight, away from those who mock them. Until a morning comes when they will no longer work in secret. Fingers sore and blistered, Isatu hauls the recycled purses to the city. One person laughs at her, then two, then ten, then... One woman lays Delassi coins on the table. She chooses a purse and shows it to one friend, then two, then ten. Soon. Everyone wants one. Isatou fills her own purse with Delassi. She zips it shut and rides home to tell grandmother she has made enough to buy a new goat.
When she passes by the pile of rubbish, she smiles because it is smaller now. She tells herself, one day it will be gone and my home will be beautiful. And one day, Author's note, I first traveled to the Gambia, West Africa in 2003 as a volunteer teacher. I had an amazing experience, but something threatened to ruin my memory of it all. The heaps of garbage piled everywhere. The problem seemed too big to fix. Then a friend told me that in a rural village, a woman named Isatu Sise was doing something about it. My friend showed me a beautiful purse made from recycled bags, and I vowed to meet Isatu. During my third stay in the Gambia in 2007, I finally connected with Isatu. I interviewed many women and girls, including the original Gambian women who had begun the recycling project with Isatu a decade earlier. They shared past stories of dead livestock, strangled gardens, and malaria outbreaks linked to the trash. But they also shared new stories of healthier families, better income, and increased self-confidence. Although I wasn't able to include all the details about the women and their project in this book, I believe the story I've shaped captures their spirit and inspirational accomplishments. Today, Nijau is much cleaner, the goats are healthier, and the gardens grow better. Residents from nearby towns travel there to learn the craft of recycling. People from around the world continue to purchase the recycled plastic purses, and the women contribute some of their earnings toward an empowerment center where community members enjoy free health and literacy classes, as well as learn about the danger of burning plastic trash. In 2012, that center also became the home for the region's first public library. By the time you read this book, I hope that a copy of one plastic bag is shelved there and that it will be checked out once, then twice, then a hundred times. So what is your hope for this project? Uh, my hope is like to pilot it uh, all, over the, all over the country. If we can, we can pilot it all over the world so that people will be able to control the plastic bag because it's definitely very difficult to decompose and it can make you know, a lot of problems around us. What did you think of the story? If you have someone at home, you can turn and tell them. What? You thought about the story. In this story, we have some problems and solutions. What was one of the problems in the story? If you said the goats, you're right. The goats were eating the plastic bags and they were getting sick and dying. What was the solution? Clean up the plastic bags. So keeping the bags cleaned up helped the goats because they didn't eat them anymore. What was another problem in the story? You're right, there were too many plastic bags. What did they do to solve that problem? In this case, they made the plastic bags into yarn to make things with like purses and bags and they sold them. In this case, they sold them in order to make, or to, they sold them in order to buy more goats. In this next clip, you're going to see me demonstrate how to cut a plastic bag and turn it into plarn. If you have your plastic bag and scissors out, now's a good time to get them ready and try to follow along. I'm going to show you how to make a plastic bag into plarn. You want to make a clean plastic bag. I'm going to flatten out a little bit. Now you could cut it this way, or someone taught me a trick where you could fold the bag to make it easier to cut. 
also flatten out your flat plastic bag, then you can fold it. And then you simply cut off the handles and the bottom. Then you make your strips. I'm gonna make my strips a little wider. If you're making something bigger or something that you want to be sturdy, you might want to cut wider strips. Mine are about an inch big. And then depending on what you're making, you can keep your strips like this. Someone taught me a trick where you take the bags and loop them together. So it's gonna be a stronger link. You just take the loop, pull it through itself. you have a link. If you don't need it to be as strong, you can simply take your loop. I just tore it apart, but you could cut it. And you can tie it together and have strips. So what did you think? Was that easy? If you had a chance, to cut your plastic bag into plarn, were you able to do so? Next, we're gonna watch a short little video on how to crochet our plarn to start to make something. Oops, up here it comes. with plarn. So I'm going to take my plarn and my crochet hook. I'm using an 11 and a half millimeter. This is probably the biggest I would use for making mats with plarn. Anywhere from a 9 to 11 and a half is good. So there are so different size crochet hooks. Initial loop with the plarn. The short end is going over the top. I'm going to reach through, pull the short end through the loop and pull it tight. I'm going to keep it nice and loose. I'm going to yarn over and pull through. Yarn over, pull through. We're just starting a foundation chain here. Just keep it nice and loose. When you come to a knot, sometimes it sticks a little bit. Just work it through. And I'm going to do five, chain of five plus one. Because I want five single crochets. So we're going to skip the first one and go into the second one and start with our single crochet. So we're going to yarn over and pull through and now you have two loops on your hook. Yarn over and pull through both of those. And you can see I'm just wiggling the hook a little bit to keep the plier nice and loose. So if it gets too tight on you, uh, it's going to be really hard to work with. So we're just going back in through each of the chains, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, and pull through two. We're going to continue like this until the end. Um, I only did five here. If you were doing a full mat, you would do 30 to 35 chains, uh, 30 to 35 single crochets with your one extra chain on the end. I'll give you a mat like two to two and a half feet wide. So then when I come to the end, you can see the first row of single crochets. Now I'm going to chain one, just like we did at the beginning. And I'm going to turn it over and start again. So this time we're going to go into the top of your single crochet stitch and go right in through. You can see it's like a little V on the top. So yarn over, pull through and you have two on your hook yarn over and pull through again and just remember to keep wiggling your hook keeping your stitches nice and loose so that was a quick demonstration of how you crochet now i haven't had a chance to crochet with my plarn yet but i may have to try that soon if you look here's some projects you can make with your plarn the person in the last video was showing you how to make a mat here's an example of a mat in our story, 
they were making purses or change purses. Here's a purse or a bag you could take to the store and put stuff in. And then at the end, we have a simple basket. What I want to show you now is a quick project where you don't need a crochet hook like they used in our last video. And you're going to learn how to make a Plarn bracelet. I'm going to worry it's a little loud to start, just some music with it. And this is done by kids. They also show you another way to cut bags into a strip. We'll watch this too. There's actually no words to this. So if you see, they cut the ends off and cut down the side. And you cut the little edges out. Then they cut their bag into strips. I like the way they're using teamwork to help each other cut the bag into strips because sometimes it's a little hard. Now step two is choose three strips, twist them, then braid them. So if you watch, they're twisting the bags. There's one strip. Two strips. Three strips. It was a good idea to use the stapler to help hold one end of the bag. You could use something heavy or you could have a friend help. So now they have their three strands. They're simply braiding the strip. They're almost done. They're almost there. Now step three is get scissors and cut off the ends of the bracelet. So you cut off the little ends. She twisted those and braided a little bit more. Or he, it actually doesn't show us who is making the bracelet right now. She kind of twisted it and made little knots at the end. And then they cut off the pieces. Step four, get two pieces of colorful duct tape and tape the ends together. There you have your bracelet made with porn. Hopefully you can try that home with your porn. Thank you for joining me on Learn at Home with VIA. Stay tuned for more programming about Africa.